Rent in America is getting more expensive, no matter where you live. Rent growth has accelerated coast to coast in big cities, rural areas, east, west, south, north, just across the entire economy. The areas where we are seeing the strongest rent growth are in places like Austin, Texas. Yeah, so my name is Maria and I live in Austin, Texas. During the pandemic, a lot of people began to leave and actually the rent dropped that year by $100. I am due to renew my rent, and there was a spike of $400. Making matters worse, few of the new homes in construction are affordable. Rental demand continues to be extremely strong, and the rental units that are being built are the more expensive ones, that is the higher end ones. Meanwhile, workers' pay isn't increasing enough to match the new rent. We had wage suppression for 40 years, and then we have the period now where wages are growing, especially at the low end. And so the question is, how long will that continue? Experts say the rent increases will have an impact on the economy. A lot of the you know, monthly expense for the you know, typical household is, is money that's going toward the rent or to upkeep of the house. So it is a very important part of all of consumer expenditures. In the most competitive markets, rents are creeping toward record highs. Renters in smaller markets are feeling the squeeze too. For example, one-bedroom rentals in Gilbert, Arizona, spiked over 116% in the past year. Meanwhile, rent for a single-family home is growing at its fastest pace since 2005, according to CoreLogic. So how did we get here? One answer is the bounce back from the pandemic. You saw tech companies, major firms moving to smaller cities, cities like Pittsburgh, Austin, San Antonio, Charlotte, these are cities that really started booming because workers had more flexibility. And when the city starts booming, of course, the rents go up because it's a supply and demand issue. But the story goes back further than that, all the way back to the Great Recession. I am President Obama, are you listening? This has been building really since the uh, end of the financial crisis back a little over a decade ago. A lot of communities have made it more difficult to build more homes closer to the urban cores. Building materials, uh, particularly lumber, has been in short supply. That's been a problem. Uh, labor, you know, a lot of people left the construction trades in the housing bust back a decade ago. And because of the changes in foreign immigration laws, we have a lot fewer foreign immigrants coming into the country. Many of those folks would work in the construction trades. Also, uh, a lot of smaller builders, they rely on loans from banks. And uh, since the financial crisis, uh, banks, particularly smaller banks, mid-sized banks, have been uh, unable to, because of regulatory changes and other reasons, unable to, to provide enough loans. So, you, you know, there's a melange of things going on here. After the financial crash of 2008, house building stalled. By the end of the tens, renters had fewer options, especially in real estate hotspots. Pre-COVID, we saw a huge rush to urban centers. Millennials love to live in cities longer. They were actually living there longer than the previous generations their age had because they weren't able to get out and afford to buy homes because home prices were so high. So you had so much demand in the cities. Then the pandemic hit. So if you look at some of the high-rise apartment buildings in the really dense central business districts, the, the big cities, rents were actually declining in the first 12 months of the pandemic. But smaller cities like Phoenix and Austin received more of those remote workers. That sent prices upward for people like Maria. Right now, I would say for a studio, it's probably $2,000. This place, it's, it's a one-bedroom, was originally set at 1700 when I first moved in. Maria is a teacher and needs to commute to work every day. She and many other Americans don't have the luxury to move further away from work to save cash. That's creating wider issues in the economy. There's a lot of evidence that the lack of housing closer to where the demand is in urban cores is having a meaningful negative consequence on long-term economic growth. So if we can figure out a way to change zoning rules and laws and get the lumber and land and, and labor that we need and able to build closer to where the jobs are, you know, our economy will be able to grow more quickly, more strongly in the longer run. Renters in the traditionally cheaper suburbs are feeling the burn too. Economists say that finding any home to rent right now is uniquely difficult. Because the vacancy rates are really so low. It's the lowest we've seen in a generation. Coming out of the pandemic, it's likely for rents to keep rising. Fortunately, 
uh, builders are ramping up their building. They, they can make a lot of money, you know, with uh, rents this high and house prices this high. So they have a lot of incentive to put up more homes and that's happening slowly, but surely we are seeing more homes put up. So that's a good sign. Um, and we've seen an increase in single family housing starts. That's really important because that's the preferred housing structure in, during the pandemic. So uh, having investors come in, buying homes, might maybe it puts a little upward pressure on home prices. Sure, maybe it does. But it does increase the stock of single family rental homes available in the market and should help to moderate rent growth. And in the cities, some realtors are weighing whether to convert their less busy office districts into residential neighborhoods. The idea is to say that there are some uh, empty buildings, uh, you know, brick and mortars already established, but maybe one can repurpose it into residential units. For the short term, renters are dealing with the market. If I had signed the lease, I would it would be taking a lot of my savings. Um, and so I decided to move uh, to a new building. I'm losing about 150 square feet. These hikes are hitting U.S. citizens at an inopportune time. Over decades, wages for most workers have stagnated. The wages and benefits of a typical worker were suppressed in the period four decades after 1979. Growth was very slow. Uh, there was growing inequality that worked against the middle, in, in effect, against anybody in the bottom 90%. In 2019, Oregon became the first state to impose statewide rent control. They cap increases at about 7%. Cities like New York, San Francisco, and Washington, D.C. also limit rent increases. These policies have some benefits. One study found that renters were about 20% more likely to stay in their homes with rent control. Other economists think that rent control does more harm than good. So what history has shown is that by putting a rent control uh, yes, it's benefit temporarily for people uh, to pay lower rent, but that deters incentive to build more homes or provide money for maintenance. So all the housing stock steadily deteriorates over time, and one does not want to see that. So we want to encourage more production. The answer to rising rents may be in the job market. Both Congress and the Fed have pumped stimulus into the economy. It should eventually help some workers earn higher wages. There's been a huge increase in, in the demand for goods and services. So we're going to see a period of sustained low unemployment, I think. That, that this has always led to faster wage growth for those in the middle and the bottom. The other related question is, will we see the structural changes that will build this into the economy rather than be a, an episode of a, a period of low unemployment? And I think that will require uh, improving labor standards, you know, putting in the $15 minimum wage, rebuilding collective bargaining. I think it will mean paying attention to maintaining low unemployment. Which means that the answer to rising rents might be getting yourself a raise or finding roommates. They're not building enough affordable housing right now because for builders, the cost of construction is so high due to a high cost for land, labor, materials, shortages for materials, shortages of labor, that they can't build affordable housing. You know, it took us 10 years to get into this you know, predicament. It's not going to be solved next year or the year after. It's, it's going to be 10 years before we solve this problem.